In this video, I'm gonna show how I made this RFID jukebox from a Raspberry Pi and RFID reader, and then uh, show how it works. Give some code and let's go. So here's the uh, flow of the how it works. So I present a card to the antenna. Uh, this RFID reader, I have a previous video that goes into more about how that works, but it basically, the there's a chip inside each card that uh, when powered by the just radiation of this antenna can uh, present a load that is differing based on the information it wants to transmit. And if you observe what that looks like on the scope, um, you can see that as the load uh, increases or the resistance decreases, it draws more current, which lowers the voltage on that the uh, chip is able to, to see. And then there's some processing that happens in this chip here. Uh, this is just a dual op amp LM358. This chip is a microcontroller that interprets the, uh, the changes here, spits out some serial data, and then that serial data could, in theory, be presented right to the Pi, but for how easy it is to just let the Arduino read it and spit it out through a USB port, I decided to go that route. So here you can see the uh, antenna is right there. I scan a card, it reads it. Um, that data is processed by this little board here, and then that is right into the uh, RX terminal, this Arduino Uno equivalent board. And then uh, I'll show the code later, but this, all it does is serial print out the information it reads. And uh, this Pi serial port is read in the, in the scripts. So later uh, I'll get into that, but the data from the Serial port is then given to the Pi, and then I can SSH into the Pi and do whatever I want with it. Um, so yeah, here's the setup. You can see that better than a breadboard and everything. Uh, here's our Arduino code, Su super easy. Uh, just reads incoming bytes on the, uh, using the, uh, just Arduino's serial capabilities and then prints it out in uh, decimal format for the Pi and I'm using Pi Serial just to interpret all that. So super easy code, just wanted to get it up and running in a day or two. Um, each card begins with a two and ends with a three, according to this reader. Um, so in all the Python code I have, all I'm doing is really, if the first byte it reads is equal to a two, then I know I'm beginning a card read and then I can uh, keep reading all the bytes until I get a three. Uh, conveniently, there's no threes in the middle of these card IDs, so code could definitely be more robust, but this only took a couple hours to get totally working, so it's worth it. Um, now, for the Spotify integration for the Pi, this was a little trickier, it took a while, so there's a uh, GitHub project called Spotified, which makes your Pi able to be a connected device when you go to Spotify and you can select which AirPlay speakers you want. So you can actually, this if you install this, it makes your Pi appear as a speaker. Um, and in order to actually make the Pi able to call Spotify, uh, the Spotify API to play songs or whatever, um, I found this other guy's project called Disc Player, where he does basically the same thing I'm doing, but with floppy disks. So he uh, puts in a floppy disk and then the Pi interprets the uh, uh, disk change and all the information on it interprets it with the Spotify URI as well. Um, so that guy has a project that does all the API calls for you, which I didn't want to get too involved in the Spotify API, so I elected to use this guy's thing. Um, however, there's still a bunch of Spotify API authentication stuff I had to do on my own. And this guy's video is a lifesaver, uh, API University for that. Basically the tokens expire after every hour. You need a Spotify developer account and everything. Um, so yeah, check out all these three things for that. Uh, so to tie it all together, there's two scripts. The first one I run when I want to program a new card. Uh, so I have a whole, like, probably 100 of these blank RFID cards. And uh, when I run it, the, the flow is you copy the URI from Spotify, which I'll show later, um, and then you give it as an argument to the script. So here's, I'm calling the Python script, we call it read serial, and then I paste in the Spotify URI I want. 
Um, and then there's actually a table. Again, I'll show that later. But internally in the file system of the Pi, it just keeps a table of card IDs and associated Spotify URIs that I give it. And the second script is just an infinite loop of uh, accepting cards to be read. Um, so every second, it first checks if the shutdown button is being pressed. So here in the GPIO pins of the Pi, um, I just hooked up a little button to safely shut it down. It's just uh, pin three is pulled up to five volts. And then if it detects a low state with the button pressed, this other pin is the ground pin, pin six, I think, uh, then it'll safely shut down. Uh, so after all that, then it'll attempt to read incoming data. If it sees a two, it'll continue, because remember, every card starts with a two according to the reader. It, uh, it presents a two, then some 12-bit code, and then ends with a three. So if it gives a two, it'll continue, or else it'll go right back to the start of the loop. Maybe it was a bad data uh, transmission or something. Then um, after that, it records all the data until you get a three, which is the end of the card's uh, ID according to the reader. Then if the data matches an existing card, uh, meaning that card is found in the table, then we look up the corresponding Spotify URI associated with that card ID that it finds, um, or else it'll just go back to the uh, loop. Then uh, every time a valid card is read, I actually request a new access token from Spotify API because the uh, you can give it a refresh token that doesn't change, and then that'll allow you to uh, ex to obtain a new access token. And since that expires every hour, if you're playing an album and then uh, you know you want to go to the next one after an hour, uh, your script will break because uh, you your script is an infinite loop. So you need to have this authentication somehow in here. Um, and then uh, disc player will take that uh, token and also take the URI that's in the table, and that script will uh, call Spotify to begin song or album, and then it just repeats. And uh, the issues I have so far is you need to select the, spot, the Pi as a device before you start scanning cards or else it will not play. So if I'm listening on my phone and then I scan a card, uh, even though it's in that loop, it'll just fail to play because it's not currently selected. So you need to actually tell your Pi to be the, the current speaker, um, and then it'll it'll work in the loop. So now I'll show you it in action. This video is going to go over how to program a card to associate it with a Spotify URI. Um, just some background, the Raspberry Pi has in its file system a CSV. Uh, which is just a table of card IDs, which are unique to these cards that I have. And uh, through a Python script, I'm associating each card that's read to the Spotify URI. So I have about like five of these right now with random albums. Uh, and I'm going to program this blank card uh, to be associated with this album right here. So the way to get the URI is you right click, share, copy Spotify URI. And then from there, um, in this script here, one of the command line arguments you give is just the URI. So if I run the script here, paste the URI, the Raspberry Pi will expect me to scan a card. There, it just spat out the ID, which means it was successful. And now if I want to actually play this card, um, I'll start up the main program, which is just an infinite loop, which will start to expect cards and you can scan different ones. So here's the one I just scanned. I have it print out when it can't read any serial data just for debugging. Uh, and if I scan this card here, uh, we'll see that it starts to play. That Crosby, Stills and Nash album, which is pretty cool. Uh, now while that's playing, uh, I can also scan different cards. Here's a different album and uh, I should note every time it plays a uh, different album it has to request a new Spotify token let me turn that off so uh, it does take a second but that's because each token expires after about an hour